You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Ni Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Today, I'm sharing with you what I call the life of love. The life of love. We've spoken about the first commandment. We've spoken about love is a commandment. We've spoken about the test of love. Last week, we spoke about the demands of love. And today, I am sharing with you about the life of love. When we spoke about the demands of love, we talked about the demands of exclusivity. God is a jealous God, and he wants to have an exclusive relationship with, with you. He says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. We spoke about demand of priority, that he'll be first and above all in your life. We spoke about the demand of commitment. It is a commitment unto death, till death do us part. We spoke about the demand of obedience. If you love me, keep my commandments. And then we spoke about the demand of giving cheerfully. And you'll deny yourself to give and to give and to give. Why? Because you are in love. Today, I am speaking about the life of love. First John chapter 4 verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. One of the things that identifies you as a child of God is the knowledge of God. And he that loveth not knoweth not God. The knowledge of God is not just a mere mental acquisition of information, but it's a knowledge of a life that manifests because you know God. So he that loveth not does not know God. So when God is speaking about love, He's not talking about your ability to memorize or to quote or to say, but he's actually looking at the expression and the life that you live. Because you can come to church and claim to be and yet not know him. If that was the case, it was just a mere mental acquisition of knowledge, then all the lecturers and philosophers of religion should be more knowledgeable and should know God more than those of us who didn't go to school. If you reduce the love of God to just mere knowledge, then those of us who are not well informed and are illiterate will not be able to know God. So he's not talking about just a mental or an acquisition of mere knowledge, but he's talking about the life that expresses that you know God. And he calls it the life of love. So he that loveth not knoweth not God. Why? For God is love. It is important that we move away from mere rhetorics into an expression what people will see what people will feel what people can identify with and say this is love and so i'm just going to show you a few things every one of us is created in god's image you are created in love because god is love and so when you are born of god he places within you a natural inclination to express his love love is a natural outflow of a direct link with god you cannot be with God and have hatred and acts of hatred in you. So the expression of unnecessary anger, backbiting, gossiping, pulling him down, destroying people, you know, hating people where you want them to die. 
There are some churches when you go, their prayer topic is for people to die. You see, God has no pleasure in the death of a sinner. No. That is not God. I mean, can you imagine if you offended God and God wanted you to die? But he doesn't because he's love. And so we are going to learn the life of love and you are going to understand what it means. You see, long before you marry, long before you meet somebody you say, I want to live with, you must have a life. Something must identify who you are. And it mustn't just be your qualification as a lawyer, a banker, or a pastor. You must be identified with a life. Whether you are a banker, you must have a life. Whether you are a lawyer, you have a life. Whether you are a tomato seller, there is something about the life of a human being which makes it easy for people to live with you. You know, there are some people very difficult to live with. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5, 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Who, who are we to follow? If you are a child of God, who are you to follow? Another human being. No? Because if God left us just to determine our lives by other human beings, what about if the person you are following is a bad example? So God said, I know there are human beings who are good, but in your life, you see, take your eyes off human beings and follow the perfect example. So you may not have good examples around you, but that is no excuse for you not to do the right thing. Because you can take your eyes off, your father may be a bad example, your mother may be a bad example, but there is another example God wants you to look at. Your pastor may even be a bad example. The clergy, the president may be a bad example. So he's saying, don't allow the examples around you to freeze your life and determine how you live. If you want to understand life, look at me. And so he says, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And in verse 2, he's going to explain. He says, and walk in love. Walking is a very systematic, calculated decision. <laughs> you walk in love. It's a decision. So the Bible says, walk in love as you follow God. Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. So it's showing all of us how to do it. You are to do it not according to your tradition. You are to do it not according to the examples you see around. You are to do it according as Christ has loved you. So one of the things about love is that your example is Christ and you must make him your aim. I want to walk in love as Christ walked in love. Sometimes you can see great examples. But I want to walk in love as Christ loved the church. What this means is that every one of us, you need to be able to study the example of Jesus Christ. You need to be able to look at him because he says, walk in love as Christ loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. So our work is being defined. You are going to walk in love as Christ loved us. Every one of us. It is mandated that you have a certain lifestyle. Whether you are ever, you see, your tribe mustn't freeze you. Whether you are gone, it, it mustn't be determined. You know, sometimes that, as for guns, this is how we love. Your love may fall short of the standard. As for ever, this is how we love. As for those of us who live abroad, this is how we love. You see, the word of God is not differentiated by your location and by your experiences. If you're a lawyer, this is how you love. No. If you don't learn the right examples, you will have challenges. So our aim as a church is to walk in love the same way Christ loved us. Let's go over a few things today. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The first thing all of us should know about love is that, number one, love is a decision. Love is a choice decision. And I'm using those two words carefully. The word choice means that there are alternatives, but I choose. So when he says, I'm making a choice, it means there are alternatives, but this is my choice. And then number two, it is a decision. So out of all the alternatives, this is my pick. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Let's all read it together. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Ah, so we are going to walk in love as Christ loved us. Isn't it? Now the Bible is showing us in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ 
died for us. So God had to make a choice. We were sinners. When you are sinning, you don't deserve mercy. You don't deserve love. You rather deserve punishment. But against his feelings, he made a contrary choice and a decision. So one of the first things you will have to understand is that love is a decision and not an emotion. It's beyond your emotions. So if you are only going to love by your emotions, you will have a lot of challenges in life. Because people you love will hurt you. People you love will disappoint you. Because the first thing to understand is the other human being is a human being. He's not perfect. So if you are going to let your emotions guide you, at a certain stage you will be very heartbroken or disappointed or hurt. But the Bible says in the midst of the pain and the hurt, while we were yet sinners, you see, God decided and made a choice. So you are going to have to make a choice whether to love or to hate. If you go with your emotions, you will be angry, you will hate, you will destroy. If you go with a decision, I have decided to love, I will love, you are making a choice. So when the circumstances demand anger, remember, you can make a choice. When the circumstances demand judgment, you can make a choice. So the person deserves punishment, but you can make a choice. You know, what the Bible is showing us is that you must be in control and not become a victim of other people's, sorry to say, foolishness. So whether you make me angry or not, I have decided I will love. And I'm not going to allow your pettiness and your mistakes. For God is love. You see, God is love. That is who he is. You are not now going to bring love out of him. This is who he is. And so whatever you do, love will come out. And the Bible is saying that we should walk in love the same way Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? When we deserved to be punished, he chose. He made a decision. And his decision was, I will love him. I will continue to love. For God so loved the world. If he had moved by the things of the world, he should have brought brimstone and fire. But in the midst of it, he said, uh-uh, I am love. I will love. You know, as I grow as a minister, I've come to realize that, Charlie, there's no better way than love. And there's no better example of love than to follow and to study this person called Jesus Christ. And to decide that I will walk the way he walked. Because if you follow erratic emotional love, you will become a wreck. You are coming in the church or somebody irritates you. You get down from the car and your landlord insults you. And you are walking on the street and somebody just looks at you and doesn't like you and says something. And you get to church and the ashes today they are not in a good mood and somebody pushes you and you are coming to sing and somebody shouts you see you will become an emotional wreck because you are always going through life reacting to other people and wondering and you alone you think that the whole world is against you no 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 no. you choose you choose today i want you to make a quality choice that i will walk in love as a child of god i will follow god and walk in love i make this choice today i exercise my will to be a lover because God is love and therefore I am born of God and God's love must find expression through me. If you don't learn this work, your life may become an emotional wreck because you will always be reacting to taxi drivers and trotro drivers and you know teachers and, and, and community and everybody around you is just getting a bit of your life. Emotional wreck. You are allowing other people to dump emotions that are negative on you. Your husband comes from work, he's already angry. Then he comes to dump it on you. Your wife comes back from work, she's angry. Then she also comes to dump something on you. Your mother went to town and she didn't get a good bargain in the market. She walks home and she dumps it on you. And you become like a refuse dump. Some uncle somewhere who is angry decides to come and dump something on you. No, 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 no. No, I choose to love. I make a choice. I make a choice to love. And that's what I'm going to do. If you're in a relationship, one person will make you angry. So because of that, you are not going to talk in the house one week. You are so angry that you don't eat, you don't cook, you don't go home early. For one week, you are angry. You see, somebody is controlling you. Love makes you live. Love makes you live. And you must live long. Sometimes you are so bothered because your husband or your wife or your child. No, no. I make a choice. So long before you meet another person and you are going to tell the person I love you, you understand the work. It's not that you are crawling and then when you meet somebody tomorrow, you are going to change. No, 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 no. You were walking and you are still walking. I make a choice. The first thing to understand about love, beyond your emotions, love is a choice decision. I, I can use the word quality decision because you love yourself. You don't want to become a dumping ground for other people's refuse. 
So you choose to love. God did not act based on his emotions or feelings, but he treated us with respect and shared his love with us. We did not deserve it, but his love rather brought us close. So the reason why we are here today is we haven't come before an angry God. We've come before a loving God. That's what makes us come. Yesterday night, some of us may have done things in places we shouldn't have been and gone where we shouldn't have gone, but his love still allows us to come close to him. You see, hatred moves people away from you. Love draws people to you. So it is important for you to understand that we are walking a walk. It says, walk in love as Christ loved us. The standard has been set. You don't determine, as for me, I'll walk like a guy. As for me, I'll walk like a, an Englishman. You don't determine it. There's a standard, and the standard is Christ. Not your tradition, not your culture, not your background. Number two, love is a character. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is a character. The word character comes from a description of what your identity is. When you say, this is my character, you are actually saying, this is me. This is who I am. You mark something so that it stands out from every other person. So your character is what marks you as being different from every other person or every other thing. So what is your character? What is God's character? Verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. What is, what is love? When people are describing you, how do they describe you? Are you kind? Are you patient? Are you long-suffering? Are you suspicious of people? Do you think evil about people? Do you boast about who you are and look down on other people? Do you feel superior to other people? Are you rude? Are you arrogant? Are you stingy? What is your character? That is who you are. How people describe... You know, one of the things that all of us should do at a certain time is to ask your close friend, who am I? Mm. Or ask somebody you can trust to tell you the truth. Who am I? Because you will hear things. And, and I tell everybody, if you get less than 70%, after you've been marked by this standard, you shouldn't marry. Because if you are not kind, you haven't learned how to behave yourself. You are always suspicious. You are always thinking evil. You can't suffer. You see, because love says, love suffereth. So you are suffering, but you are quiet. And you suffer long. So look at God. Sometimes people ask, what is the definition of love? No, love cannot be defined. Love can be described. You can't define love. You can only describe it. And when you see it, you know it. You may be beautiful, but do you love? You may be powerful and have a lot of money, but can you love? You may be the most educated person, but can you love? You may earn a lot of money, but can you love? So the Bible says, love is a character. It is not a gift that you come today, hey, la, ba, 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 hey, na, la, ba. Then it will drop into your spirit. Then you say, I am ready. I have it. I have it. No. Love is a character. So let's look at God. Is God kind? Is God generous? Is God patient? You see, that's why God hasn't given up on us. Even though from day one till now, we haven't done everything, he's still patient. That is why I can still come into his presence today. Because I know he's forgiving. Are you forgiving? The Bible says, walk in love as Christ loved us. So you also do the same way. Emulate the nature and the character of this God. Walk in love as Christ also loved us. And gave himself for us as an offering. So it is not enough just to speak in tongues. It is not enough just to have a gift. Character of long suffering, of patience, of behaving yourself, of, of not being easily provoked. Of, of not think, thinking you are better than other people. I'm sure you are all assessing yourselves. I know you have money. I know you are educated. I know as for you, when you speak French and English and Spanish, we wonder the way you even speak with an accent. <laughs> mm -hmm. But your temper, hey, when you open your mouth, penalty. When you gossip about people, red card. No, no. Because you are walking in love as Christ. You see, you may have friends who are a bad example. Don't follow them. Follow Christ. He says, follow me as dear children. So when he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. You see, this is what he's teaching you. With all your soul and with all your mind. Lift up your eyes, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Not your tradition, not what you think, not what you feel, but the standard. Our aim is to walk in love. And the more we grow, the more we are assessed by our love. 
a bad person cannot change you. A bad relationship will not change you. Because you are. And when the person deserves judgment, you will still love the person. Because your heart is to correct, not to punish. See, we are talking about character now. We're not talking about gifts. We're not talking about me, we saw. We're talking about you. I know you come to church. When you speak in tongues, everybody will say your tongues is nice. When you take the microphone and begin to prophesy, everybody will keep quiet and say anointing. But all those things, God is love. And he says, you walk in love. The way you talk to people. The way you receive people. Are you kind? Are you cruel? You know, sometimes as we grow up, we think that the more powerful you are, the more cruel and arrogant you must be. So when somebody calls you, but you see, Jesus is high. He comes down to your level in Choco. So the more you love, the more you are prepared to condescend even when people don't deserve it. You see, we don't do good because people deserve it. We do good because it is right. Number three, love is a lifestyle. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Remember I didn't say the seed. The fruit. Fruit is the end result of a process. So what the Bible is saying, you got a seed of God's word in you, isn't it? When you have grown it and it is bearing fruit, we will see it. What will the fruit be? Love. So when somebody says, I am spiritual, I go to church, I know God, and I serve God, let's see your fruits. You see, the fruit is the end result. If, for example, you are a doctor, what you do at the end of your studies is the fruit. If you have gone for training as a tailor, when you are giving a dress to sew, the dress that you sew is your fruit. It shows you that you, have, you went through a process and you have produced fruits. So when you find somebody who says, I am born again. I've been born again for how many years? I serve the Lord. I know God. Watch his fruit. And the fruit is not prophesying. The fruit is not moving mountains. <laughs> the fruit is not miracles. Why? Because the first fruit God will bear as a God of love. It's not mangoes. It's love. So when we look at you, we will gauge your maturity not by your talent or your abilities or your prophesying or your miracles, but the fruit of the Spirit. The longer you stay in the Spirit, the longer you stay with God, He will teach you, you will begin to love. If you are going to be a good choir director, if you are going to be a good usher as the leader, you see, you've got to grow your fruits. If you are going to mature, you've got to grow long-suffering, kindness, patience, not erratic behavior. The fruit of the spirit at the end of a process we will see love we will feel love we will understand love ashes listen to me carefully whoever you are as a frontline person you become the brand ambassador for all of us god is not here but you are here in your office pastor bernard is not with you but you are the front gates what you say how you do how you behave you become a brand ambassador when your husband is not home and somebody a visitor comes and knocks the door you are the fruit when your wife is not home and somebody comes and knocks the door, you are the fruit. You know, so sometimes people think that, oh, when I'm in church, I'm going to be different. And when I'm home, I'm also going to be different. Or when I'm in the office, people don't know me. After all, the pastor is not there. No. A fruit doesn't change whether you are in Choco or you are in airport or you are in Tesano. A fruit is a fruit. If like carry Alasa from Choco to Tesano, it will still remain Alasa. So you learn it. If you are kind, you are kind. If you are patient, you are patient. And if you are not, you are not. So you've got to ask yourself, what, what fruit am I bearing? Because the fruit is an indication of what has been planted in me. Love is the result of a process. It's the result of a consistent, trained life. Practice deliberately over a period. It's not a gift. It just comes. No, 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 no. You learn how to forgive. You learn how to tolerate people. You learn how to live with people. You learn how to accommodate people. You learn how to speak with people. You learn it. And so if God wants to teach you love, huh? I'll show you what to do. That's what we talked about the test of love. Because he will bring things your way, then you will decide that, mm, even though this one, but I still choose. What are you doing? You are building your love muscles. How do you know, for example, you are an overcomer if there's no battle? So how do you know there's love if there's no anger and hatred? So every time you show a certain negative behavior, you have to repeat. Some of us, you have kept somebody for 15 years in your heart. You are still angry. You can't let go. No need for me. 15 years ago. The person is even dead. You are still carrying the bitterness. Just drop it. 
Just learn to forgive. Just learn to let go. Of course, you will learn from it and you make sure that you, those things don't happen again. But it doesn't mean carry the bitterness and the anger and let it cloud your future. Walk in love as Christ loved us. The people he was coming to save were nailing him to the cross. The very people he was coming to save, they didn't even see it. They nailed him to the cross and they said, beat him. And they nailed him. And yet he looked at them and he chose to love. He says, Father, forgive them. And the Bible said, walk in love <laughs> as Christ loved the church. It's a lifestyle. It's not, it's not something you pick up when you meet somebody. No, it's you. Charlie, can I let no quay fame me? Then all of a sudden, hey, I want to do something. No, 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 no. That is my life. True, the emotions of love have started manifesting, but it is backed and undergirded by a character and a lifestyle. You see, what sustains your relationship is not the emotion, it is the character. So there, there's the emotions of love where you see somebody and your heart beats. But if all your love is a heartbeat, then you die early. Because when the heart stops beating, the character must sustain it. So you meet somebody and all of a sudden you're looking at the person. I want to marry you. I love the person. And the person also proposes to you. Then you say, I receive it. But after all that, there's a song. After the love was gone, what used to be right is wrong. So after the emotions, now you have to be kind to each other. You have to be patient with each other. You have to learn to relate with each other. And that is what is the mainstay. The character rather than the emotions. Everybody can have emotions. Everybody. But within the emotions, you find one person is cruel. One person is wicked. One person is not patient. One person is angry. One person is easily provoked. Say, hey. Oh yeah, we jata biole. Okay, by hotel. No. Because what you should look for is the lifestyle. Are you with me? So God has a character of love. God makes a decision to love, and that is love. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His faith for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Rev. Me Bernard Adiakwa. We hope you've been blessed. For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power.